So this week, I we're kind of in in, in it's it's like Schrodinger's Black Friday. Yeah. When we, all of November become Black Friday? We don't know what's going to happen this weekend. True. Either we're going to have a relatively a busy but sedate shopping weekend with not like as many maybe people. Learn we can live without Black Friday. Or people are going to think because we have the vaccine now that it's time to go back out and restart Fight Club. If Halloween was any indication around here, it's going to be the second one. Oh, fuck. I had hoped, I had prayed, I had longed for the idea that the pandemic had at long last yeah. killed, murdered Black Friday. I mean, we'd all be like, you know what? We don't need this. But no, it's, it's potentially lurking. We're and it get, might actually be worse. I, I, I will have to see what stories we get but next also, week. What, what, oh what the pandemic did was make retailers are like, oh, everyone wants to shop on that line. All of November is Black Friday. Now. I've noticed. Yeah, I got uh, this this morning. I looked in my in my uh, promotions folder on Gmail <gasps> and and it was like, it's Black Friday. Black Friday sales now. Black Friday starts now. And I'm like, I started getting Black Friday ads on Halloween. Have we? And I'm like, look, it's bad ahead? enough. Christmas has just been slowly la la. annexing all of autumn. <laughs> We don't need the night in Turkey to do it too. Okay. Let Halloween night live. Although, you know, Target is actually, we're going to be closed <laughs> on Thanksgiving. Like it's some magnanimous night and not like no one's willing to work on Thanksgiving. Not like a thing we, that used to be normal until about five years ago. It, they're, they're pretty much like, oh, we're going to be closed on Thanksgiving. Yeah. You ain't got a choice. Ain't nobody going to be there to open the door. Yeah. You're going to be closed. You acting like, oh, my, oh, look how gracious we are. We're such good people. Also, everyone said that they will quit over the intercom and TikTok it. And that's scary. <laughs> so we're just not going to open. We don't know what a TikTok is, but the kids do. And it's scaring the shit out of us. <laughs> but it sounds bad. It sounds bad. <laughs> Teenagers scare the living shit out of me. <laughs> All right, so now that we've we've covered the bases and we'll and the anticipation for next week, uh, let's get to this week's because you know stupid shit still happened. Let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead or audience, completely screw up the shot and it looks bad. Um, whoopsie. I see a little bit behind the scenes there. Oops. Um, each week, Catherine Radio, Radio Dead Ryan's go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little something we like to call what the fuck is wrong? Yeah, the, the pictures, the cropping is stupid. Yay! Live, everybody! Yay. If you don't believe we do Watch this shit live. The sausage get made. Hmm? Watch the sausage get made. Yeah, if you don't believe we don't do this shit live, we do this shit live. Guys, we definitely do this shit live because I usually come running in here and get in the chair like about two minutes before he's done with the promos because this takes time. I don't I don't look like this at all. Let's start with uh, the audacity of this motherfucker. Always a good start. Have you ever had to do a nine and dash? No, I've never waited tables. That's one of like the few service industry jobs I have not had. Well, no, a dine and dash is, is when you, you eat and run. You don't pay. Oh, you're asking if I've done that. Yeah. No. No, never? No. Wow. I'm not a bad person. <laughs> well, there, okay, there's being a bad person, and then there is having the confidence to think this was the solution to the problem. Oh no. This motherfucker. 
man skipped out on four thousand dollar bill at the Bellagio, and then made a bomb threat. And and Sir, what, you are not George Clooney. And when I say made a bomb threat, he he, this was not phoned in a bomb threat. We'll get there. Oh my God, this dude. Las Vegas police say a man tried to skip out on a four thousand dollar restaurant bill then made a bomb threat at the bellagio according to the arrest report greg cohen um officers were called when they arrived security told them cohen had been eating and drinking in spago restaurant the casino and had a bill of four thousand three hundred twelve dollars seventy five cents he reportedly got up and left saying he was using the restroom ah that age old i'm just gonna go pee you hold on to my $4,000 check. And the restaurant's manager, Cohen had ordered seafood and a bottle of Dom Perignon, then socialized with women nearby and bought them champagne. So, yeah. Manager then said he saw Cohen at a table game. Casino? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he didn't, le- he didn't even leave the entire area, okay? The restaurant's in the casino. He left the rest. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Then he just walked over to the casino, which was right next to the restaurant. They could see him. But he was asked to return to pay the bill. The report said Cohen stated he had $10,000 to pay, but then uh, opened his pockets and had no money. That, w- was it invisible money? Did you get that new? It's sp- what? It it's Bitcoin. all in Bitcoin. It's on Bitcoin, right? Um, he was then taken into security custody while waiting for police to arrive. Security said Cohen said, "I bet if there was a bomb, they'd get here really fast." When asked directly if he placed a bomb in the casino, Cohen reportedly said, "There is a bomb." Then repeated the word "bomb" multiple times. So normally in this situation, when someone does some heinous shit and tries a bomb threat, they do it over the phone. Yeah. They at least try to put some distance between themselves and being a fucking terrorist. This guy put distance between himself and his bar bill. (laughs) (laughs) And it's not like it's the only casino on the strip. Right. Just go next. I think what Nick, what's next door? The Cosmopolitan. Just go next door. The, the, this this dude literally thought, okay, well, if I say there's a bomb, they'll have to let me go, and I'll escape in the chaos. No. You say there's a bomb, they cuff you. Yeah. You you've just you've now gone from it's still four thousand is still petty theft, right? What what's the limit? Does anyone know the limit for grand theft? I don't know. So I think it's like ten thousand, but I'm not entirely sure. But th- there's a cutoff. So at, at four thousand, you're still it's still you know you're not this still misdemeanor territory technically. I mean you'll you'll get in trouble. You might serve some time in jail, but you're not going like you know it's still like you know. But when you jump to a bomb, th- congratulations, you have instantly graduated. To a fucking felony. Yep. It varies from state to state. Ten thousand dollars. Yeah. And let me tell you, where you're going, there's no Dom Perignon. No. Or pretty girls. Well, some old Davy makes liquor in toilet. Yeah, you 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 might get some toilet moonshine. <laughs> uh, Nevada law defines grand larceny. Oh, property over twelve hundred. So you're fucked, dude. You're fucked. Oh, either. yeah. I don't, you do not joke about the, the, look, cops don't need a reason to arrest you. But if you give them one that anybody else, like, yeah, he said, bomb, we're fucked. It's fucked. I mean, but also like, if you think that casinos don't have bomb bunkers, where do you think they tested all the nukes? And these people have a lot of money that they take very seriously. I promise you, there's a bunker under there, and you're going to be cuffed in, in it. And 
Even this mugshot. Look at this this fucking mugshot of this guy. Work, work for George Clooney. But here's a better one. We got a bet. This is like one. Of, this is a great mugshot. <laughs> like this. Like holy fuck. Um, especially for given the story. It's like wow. Ah. Uh, Man, Orange, Connecticut, man found sleeping inside school bus with over 11 pounds of marijuana on him. Is it Connecticut? <laughs> yep. Look at that mugshot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> can you even be mad at him? <laughs> his name's Brendan O'Connor. Of course, his fucking name is Brendan O'Connor. Look at that face. <laughs> Man was taken into custody Thursday morning after he was found sleeping inside a school bus in Orange, Connecticut. Shortly after 5 a.m., employees started showing up to work when they found a suspicious car parked in the bus yard. When officers searched the area, they found 55-year-old Brendan O'Connor of Milford asleep in one of the buses. Police searched his car and also found approximately 11.5 pounds of marijuana, packaging materials, scales, and cash. He was arrested and charged with operating a drug factory, sale of more than one kilogram of cannabis, and third-degree criminal trespass. That's a lot of weed. That's 11 pounds. That's, yeah, you're set for a while. Yeah. Unless you got a really, really, really high tolerance, you're set for a while. And I have a pretty high tolerance for, you know, the devil's lettuce, but 11 pounds would still last me a while. I have. I have Dan and I are like perfect yin and yang because he has uh, the t the alcohol tolerance of a Tolkien dwarf. But he smoked a joint like one time and wound up dry heaving in our bathroom for three hours. <laughs> I one drink and I'm fucking shit face, but I can do weed all fucking day. <laughs> so it balances out. Oh, but the just the, his. He is toasted. Yeah. Bless his heart. <laughs> is uh, Connecticut the Florida of the Northeast? No. no. I, as, that's like Staten Island. This is probably one of the easiest arrests they had all day. What? what? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> He probably just came with them. They're like, he's got guy, the dude booking. Just and that's that's my weed. Can we get that on the record, sir? Yeah, that's my, my that's my weed. <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Brendan. It's not legal everywhere yet. No, we're getting there. It should be. This shouldn't be a crime, but. The part that was a crime, you did break into the, the, you slept, you slept in, you did break into the bus. Go, go. You want to know how I knew this dude was Irish the second I saw the mugshot? Oh. Uh. After 40, Irish people all have the same cheeks. <laughs> you see the line? I have them. You see the line here and then here? We hit 40 and we all turn into basset hounds. It's just something in the fucking shamrock jeans. I don't know why. <sighs> I saw those cheeks and I was like, that's an Irish guy. Well, we've got another one in the lockup and this is like every once in a while we get a perfect example of Dunning-Kruger. Just like perfect, like textbook. Simba. The department of how hard could it be? Brawl wire used in dopey jail escape bid. You're going to love this. While locked up in a quote-unquote scary Florida jail following a DUI arrest, a Florida woman removed the metal wiring from her bra and used it to damage the cell door in an attempt to escape the jail. Listen, that fucking wire might as well be useful for something. Susan May Shepard, 59, failed her MacGyver-like ingenuity. It is worthy of notice. 
Shepard was arrested October 31st on a DUI charge and booked into the Sumter County Jail. Um, while in her cell, Shepard removed the metal wiring from her bra and proceeded to make numerous scrape marks into the glass at the bottom of the cell door. Shepard also allegedly sought to crawl out of a small opening in the holding cell to her feet first and had to be directed to put her legs back in the cell. When later questioned, Shepard reportedly copped to damaging the cell door with her bra wire in an attempt to escape the jail, which she described as scary. You a Florida jail on Halloween, I imagine is very scary. There are how how the bra shake redemption. <laughs> <laughs> so how think of how many people are in the jail at that moment. Who are all, do you think they're all staying there because they want to? Right. Because, they just but you're special out? though. You're special. You've gotten the key, the thing none of them have. Presumably if you're in, in, in the section where everyone is presenting as women. Like when Emma Frost did that in X-Men First Class, it's because she can turn into Diamond. Yes. She didn't, she didn't sit there pulling toward her secret pink like. Although, honestly, the way Underwire feels when it pops out, I wouldn't have been surprised to hear that it worked. And then she has tried to be like, well, I can fit through that hole. Like, nobody else tried that. Like, they didn't notice <laughs> that the, the like place... Like, they didn't design the cell specifically to keep you inside of it. Like, yeah, it's like, oh, everyone's there on the fucking honor system or some shit. Yeah. No, honey, you you found the secret. Yeah. You're smart. You're very smart. <laughs> Damn it. Bless. <laughs> There's people like this every fucking day who think, oh, well, I can do this. No one else must have tried this. That George Carlin said, when you think about how stupid the average person is, and then you realize 50% of the world is stupider than that. <laughs> yep. I don't know if the math checks out on that, but it's still a very frightening prospect. Yeah. Oh, we got even more stupid. And this is like, we're moving on from just regular folks to people who get into a position of authority. And there's a weird effect that we have when someone has a title when someone has, you know, they are actually, they fail upwards and we don't know it. And they start getting, directing people to doing things. You think, well, they must know what they're doing. They have a title. The Milgram experiment. We just believe, we trust authority. Look yeah. Up. And in yeah. this case, sometimes authority are fucking morons. City plans to temporarily pause construction of Miami's deepest underground parking garage. Miami. Now, I don't know if you understand how coastal areas work. We have something called a water table. And in coastal areas. They call the ocean. Yeah. Coastal areas, I live in one. We don't do basements, and it's not an aesthetic choice. It's not a style thing. It's that if you dig down like further than six feet or so, and that's if you're lucky, you've struck water. Congratulations, you found the water. It's probably not like, water you want. Away with that where I live, because we're a mile off the damn sea level. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of room. Yeah. Even Maybe? in even in fucking New Orleans, they have to be careful about the cemeteries because the fucking coffins will pop the fuck out of the ground if it rains too goddamn hard. So Miami, someone, Miami building officials decided to pause construction of the city's quote deepest subterranean parking garage to you conduct like one level. <laughs> to conduct a holistic engineering evaluation after a series of groundwater breaches and complaints from concerned residents. On Tuesday, 
an aerial view and that's there's your picture right there folks right right there tuesday an aerial view of the ex evacuation site showed the pooling of water in a different section of the cavernous pit where water bubbled to the surface friday in a second breach spokesperson for the miami-dade county's department of regulatory and economic services said tuesday the water quote will keep coming into the site until they fix quote what's known as the trim seal um they said that it's an operational issue rather than an environmental violation city officials uh city building officials says friday's breach is expected to be capped tomorrow and when it is they will issue a stop work order on the project and bring in three engineers to evaluate what impact if any the product the project is having on surrounding properties uh, what because it's weak in the ground yeah yeah this this was a bad idea this entire thing this whole thing was a bad plan someone thought no i have a way to get away with it someone probably sold them on this there were there's probably some developer full of fucking magic beans who went to the the, the regulatory people now i mean county department of, of fucking permits and shit that's literally what's called it's the department of fucking that's, permits called. that's the official name yeah and and was like hey i can build an underground group. don't you want to know have some place to put the cars yeah won't they like it if you have some place to put the cars yeah well i can give you that we just have to dig a hole what about the water i fixed it are you sure here's money okay in connecticut when i lived in danbury connecticut there was a big landfill in oh. danbury connecticut and all the locals knew like one end of town in the summer just smelled all summer because the heat plus the landfill like that end of town just smelled terrible all summer like there was a movie theater down there didn't make it because the movie theater would smell like you'd be watching a movie and everything smelled like garbage some developer came in and built condos on the hill downwind from the landfill and we were all like, who the fuck approved that? Like, who approved the funding? What do you know? They're having trouble selling these condos once they're built. They sold them to a bunch of people not from the area. And a year later, all these people are like, oh, my God, it smells so bad here all the time. And I can't sell this condo. <sighs> and all the locals are like, were you not wondering why nobody local was buying? <laughs> Uh, well, you wanted to people flip throw money at any stupid fucking idea. It is the Dan, the, the Danbury, Connecticut, that John Oliver keeps talking about. Yeah. I can't believe that guy is still mayor. He's a fucking idiot. Yeah, a dude has been mayor since I lived there, and he's a fucking idiot. So yeah, is this yeah this? I could have told you this was a stupid. You know, one week I've got just we I got to open talking about the Millennium Tower in San Francisco because that's another complete it's fucking they thought they were going to put a skyscraper where they shouldn't and now guess what it's sinking uh and it's again also full of condos no one wants to fucking buy all right next like up catch a land in this country the size of a postage stamp there will be townhouses on it within a year well next up let's uh let's head over to manchester um this is probably, I don't know. All right. It seems to me, and I could be completely wrong about this, but it seems to me that one thing we still tend to respect as a culture is the moment of silence. Yeah. Even, I guess it's kind of drilled into us in elementary school. Like you don't fuck around during the moment. It's a sort of like we leave psychic scarring on fucking kids so they don't fuck around during the moment of fucking silence. That seems like something we all respect. Until now. Because what's better than a moment of silence with a goddamn tank? Tank driven to Remembrance Day service smashes into War Memorial after, quote, someone forgot to put the handbrake on. 
a hired tank driven to a Remembrance Day service by two former soldiers smashed into a war memorial garden after, quote, someone forgot to put the handbrake on. Local councillor Mark Fearn and ex-mayor Andy Langdon splashed out about a thousand pounds, that's the money, not weight, on the eight-ton scimitar for the stunt in Bullington, Cheshire. Um... But the 7.8-ton machine rolled into the memorial gates, smashing them to pieces. Fern admitted he caused the accident, and the tobacco left him feeling, quote, a bit embarrassed to say the least. Do you not love the English ability for understatement? <laughs> you fucking rolled a tank through a war memorial, and you're a bit embarrassed. Barron and Langdon hired the tank and appeared out the turret to drive to the minute of silence. According to the villager, the vehicle was parked close to the entrance um, of the memorial for it rolled into the stone and metal gates. One villager said they were waving and laughing as they drove through the village. Yeah, I know what I'm going to remember the fact that uh, oh, uh, the fact of war and and terror and horror and and losing friends and and murder and i'm gonna laugh and wave in a giant machine of destruction but to be honest if you got to drive a tank you would be pretty fucking tickled by that i kind of time in a place even getting to drive a tank yes but like it even michael dukakis fell into this trap <laughs> like they're like you're gonna get to drive the tank and all of a sudden everybody's seven years old can I honk the horn? It's a tank. It doesn't have a horn. Oh. <laughs> well, what do you do if somebody has to get out of the way of the tank? It's a tank. Over them. <laughs> <laughs> I also didn't know that tanks had a handbrake. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I never thought about it. <laughs> I, I, it'd be funny if all, all these battlefields that before someone <laughs> that someone is remembering to set the handbrake. Yeah. On the tank. Like, I don't know if I would remember that <laughs> under that amount of stress. No, I don't think I would either. I think that should be a one step process. <laughs> yeah, you just take the fucker out of gear and you're done. Yeah, I think we can improve upon that technology. Oh my, do tanks Maybe we have by now. This is a World War II tank. So, like. Do tanks have a clutch? Oh, God. Do tanks have a manual transmission? See, this is where I wish Dan wasn't sleeping, because he would know the answer to that. I mean, I can, I can understand. He's, he's still... It seems I, I can understand why you would want a manual transmission on a tank. They're easier to fix. Yeah. But then again, you're popping the clutch on a tank. That's some weird yeah. shit. You have to have like a little, little gear shifter. What does what is the gear shift? Does it have the little instructions on the gear shift like the normal, like first, second, crush? Yeah, how how does that one work? I will have to inquire with Dan about this and try to get back to you. Um, he's still he's still healing from surgery. Mm -hmm. They kind of rearranged his whole digestive tract, so he sleeps a lot right now. Uh, but I will find out. Speaking of rearrest, rearranging a digestive tract. I don't. All right. I don't want to <clears throat> segue. This is our most. Mike hurt. says tanks have manual transmissions. Mike says yes. Yeah, that that it makes it because automatic transitions when they're fucked, they're fucked. Manual transmission, you get like rubber bands and a paper clip, and you can fix that motherfucker. You're done. You need... From what he's telling about the army, that does seem like the yeah. way they would want to do things. So, I feel for delivery drivers and all this stuff lately. Because, you know, they've kind of become the linchpin of the goddamn economy and they're not even being paid what they're worth because they're all you know, independent contractors. Yeah, fucking kick. I'm eating Instacart of groceries this week because even with just a head cold, I'm not really about going out in public. And I, I understand it's hard. It's, it's rough. They've kept us afloat. Yeah. That being said. Them well. I, I will give you some slack. I will cut you some fucking slack. Not this much slack. DoorDash driver defecates in customer's residential, residential lobby 
after dropping off order. A DoorDash driver in Southern California is seen on surveillance video using... I don't want video. Uh, I'm not playing the video. Even I'm not going there, but there is video if you're curious. Building manager of a Brentwood apartment building said uh, was contacted by a resident of the building saying there were feces all over the lobby of the 15-unit building. When the building manager checked the surveillance video, she was shocked to see a DoorDash delivery driver using her trash can in the building's lobby. What I saw, I could not unsee. I was flabbergasted by what I saw. Lisa Stanley, who was the DoorDash customer for the delivery, uh, she let it go. You know what they say when they got to go, you got to go. And boy, did she ever. You're four steps from outside where there's a bush or your car or I don't know, but not in the living lobby of a Brentwood apartment building. This is a health issue. You have a human being who's taking a poop in the middle of her job in a lobby of an apartment building and then resuming her job, which is delivering and touching food. This is... Okay, DoorDash's response here is... DoorDash official went on to say the driver associated with the delivery is no longer able to deliver with DoorDash. Details of all investigations are kept private. The company refunded the order and added an additional $20 credit to her account, as well as refunded the, the tip. Uh, um, 20 buck credit. That's, that's your solution for this one. You gotta... And I know, like, they're on... They're on a time crunch. Yep, you know? they are. So I, I get that. But the, mm, that's not the solution. No, it's not. And it's, maybe DoorDash needs to look at the time crunch they put people under. But, and let Because, like, you were just in a restaurant that has a bathroom. But, Tara, they gave her a $20 credit. Like health codes usually require restaurants that have a sit down area to have a bathroom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hear you, but $20 credit. I would use the shit out of that $20 credit. No <laughs> pun intended. I would, I would use that $20 credit. I mean, also like, what else are they going to do? Like, yeah, they're, they're, they are all independent contractors. Like, I'm not really about defending corporations, but I don't know that there's much that DoorDash can do other than that. How about? Besides fixing, yeah. Hire like, people. The worker conditions, yes. As actual, yeah. If you hire people an employee, there is something. But that's just, that's what, this is one of the reasons they don't want to hire people. So they can be like, well, you know, as an independent contractor, we don't really have any policies. <sighs> That's why they don't want to do that, because they don't want to be the person responsible. We were this close to maybe fixing this, California. Because if y'all had let yeah. that law stand, then it would have spread. Because law, quite often, California laws kind of impact the rest of the nation. Yeah. But oh no, y'all yeah. stupid asses had to vote it down on that fucking referendum ballot bullshit. I mean, it's just, you know, that like the millennials, they're just like so lazy. Just buy a house and stop getting a latte. Well, now they're pooping in your lobby. Enjoy. You, you That's could, what happens. You, we could have. What happens when you fucking rig in the economy for 40 years and nobody can live? It's just. It's hellscape. That is everywhere. gross, though. Don't do that. Oh yeah, but the, the first thing we learned. If I like Tara, but it's unfortunate Luke wasn't here for this one. <laughs> Poor Luke. So much poop. Whenever you're not here, he gets poop. <laughs> Poor Luke. Um, the first thing we learned this week is uh, maybe uh, your your if if you devise a hellish system for managing people's time and work um they're gonna poop in things by necessity yeah they're they're gonna poop in shit so you, pff, there you go um we've learned to takes have hand breaks and you shouldn't forget them <laughs> they're 
important. Especially during the moment of silence. Yeah. I just love how they're giggling, like, hey, we're going to respect veterans. <laughs> People died. Yay. <laughs> um, we've learned if someone tries to convince you that they can make a giant underground parking garage in a coastal area. Do a little independent research on that one because maybe the money is, yeah. Um, we've learned that it, it, there are many ways to attempt to leave incarceration. Uh, underwire isn't one of them. We've learned that we're still uh, looking for a use for it. We've so learned we scratch that one off the list. We've learned that don't, we've learned don't get high on your own supply or you're going to wake up in a fucking school bus. Very confused. <laughs> and, fi and finally, we've learned that the important step in both the dine and dash and the bomb threat is a layer of removal, is some separation between yourself and the illicit act. You know how they say comedy is tragedy plus distance? S successful crime is crime plus distance. Yeah. They're really, it's really a vital part of the process. It's not like jazz. You can't just wing it. You can't give them the old razzle-dazzle. Come on. Well, I can take it. I'm fine. Look at I got this. Come on. You didn't got... even leave the fucking casino. What? Didn't even leave the... And I bet you, I will bet you that he thought that he could go out and win the money to pay that tab. This guy is going to be in court and, and they're going to ask, um, uh, how does your, uh, your client plead? Um, your honor, he pleads, come on! 